Hey guys, McJeffries here, and welcome to the 11th episode of the Lazarus Project. Uh, I can't even remember what the score was in the last episode, but apparently I made one mistake in that I said Adam Armstrong was on loan from Sunderland, when in actual fact he is on loan from Newcastle. Um, I can't remember making that mistake personally. It was pointed out by a friend of mine, but if I did make that mistake, then I do apologise to all Newcastle fans, and of course Mr... Uh, Armstrong himself for throwing such accusations at him in the first place. Um, I don't think he even makes the lineup for this match. I think he's on the bench, which I suppose doesn't really appease the situation, but um, he's there. He's there on the bench, ready to come on whenever needed. In the meantime, though, we have a home game against Berry and looking for continuation of the previous results nice strong positive result good performance from the team starting to build a good team now I said this in the last episode two consecutive 1-0 victories which don't sound like the most exciting thing in the world but the most important thing is the Mourinho clean sheet uh, grind, grind out a nice 1-0 win keep the, uh, the pressure on the, the teams behind us they have to keep winning in order to keep up with us um, and overall, just yeah, keep winning, keep going for it, and see what happens. We can see we are top of the table. We are five points clear ahead of Cheltenham. Any uh, result against Cheltenham works in our favour. So any wins, draws, um, losses, not so much. Obviously, they'll start catching up with us. But any team that beats Cheltenham at the moment is doing us a favour, even if they then overtake Cheltenham. So long as we keep up our results, we are fine. And I've just spotted there, actually. Berry seemed to have Darius Charles playing up front for them. I hadn't even spotted that. I Steven's selling their best players, then, I guess. But yeah, no skin off my nose. So there's kickoff, And we go straight from kickoff to a free kick, where I demonstrate that sometimes I do press the wrong button and get it completely wrong. I just thought I'd include that. I was going to cut that out, but then I thought I'll, I'll include it. I will be a bit candid about it. Mainly because not long after that free kick, uh, I managed to do this. Really crappy through ball from Raziak towards Nimli, but Nimli wins it back. Raziak shows good awareness to get into the middle, and it's not the tidiest of finishes. It's by no means the best finish I've ever... You know, it's not the best goal I've ever scored on this game, but just the the way it all came about, it was a good pullback from Nimli. Raziak made the perfect uh, run in terms of the, the angle in which he was coming onto it. Yes, he did scuff it, but he still did enough to, to get the shot on target. And that's all it took, because the keeper was unsighted and also unset, because he wasn't expecting it. So when the ball did come into him, uh, there wasn't anything to do about it. Just had to let it go past him into the back of the net. So we took the lead. And we took that lead into half time with us. We're just going to see the end of the half here. Spoiler alert. Miss hit shot there from Nimli. Nowhere near the same amount of luck as Raziak got. I had no chance of going in. Uh, and that was that. That was the half. Again, I was pleased with the first half display. I think we did okay there. Good goal from Raziak. Good strong performance from the team. There was a few other chances that I did cut out. Um, mainly because... They weren't that interesting. One thing I did cut out, though, and I had to include it here, was an injury to Sonny Bradley. He is out for three weeks with a... something. Thigh strain, I think, or groin strain, something like that. Um, which is bad for us. But in some ways it's a blessing in disguise because Bonds and Gala hasn't had much of a chance in the team recently, so it's good to see him get a chance. It is, however, a combined error between him and Chorley which led to Mutuakil, I think I've learned how to pronounce his name now, Mutuakil, Mutuakil, something like that. Whoever, however you pronounce it, he had to come across his man there to make the challenge, and as soon as the opposition player hits the deck in the box like that, you almost know it's a penalty. Um, and sure enough, it was a penalty, up stepped Nardiello, I tried to be clever and guess which way he was going to go, he went straight down the middle and basically chipped it over Carson. Uh, so I was a little bit disappointed about that. More in conceding the penalty as in giving it away in the first place rather than conceding the goal from the penalty. Because once it's on the spot, it's a 50-50 as to whether you save it or not. Uh, I kept plugging away. 
I tried and I tried and I tried. I made the rest of the subs. I brought on, I think it was Payne and Armstrong. I think it was I brought on. Um, and I kept trying. I kept having chances. Good shots, good saves from their keeper. I decided to cut all those chances out though because they weren't really goals and they didn't impact on the score at all. But it wasn't for the love of trying. I tried and tried and tried. But I just couldn't break through. As soon as Berry equalised, they put up a very, very strong defence. I had less chances after they scored than I did before I scored the first goal. Um, but that was the end of the match. It was a one-all draw. Bit of a disappointing result, but I guarantee to you that we will bounce back stronger next time. Uh, and I think I should probably round this episode up now, guys. So uh, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you tomorrow. But until then, I will see you soon.